What's up, everybody? It's easy. Bring you another Clash Royale video, finally. Don't you hate it when they say they're gonna make them all the time and they do like one a week? One every other week? Ah, I suck. Okay. This deck is one that I've been getting. Usually, I average about 10 wins with it. So if uh, if Easy's averaging 10 wins with it, it's it's gonna do you probably better than that. Uh, I think I think the key to this deck is the mixture up between the the defensive pieces, which is the furnace and uh, the goblin hut. Which so you have two defensive buildings that both can stretch out and play offense for you, and uh, and they both do a good job of that. So especially I'm I'm a level 12, and for whatever reason. Uh, I get I see a lot of level 10 and 11 players even level 9 sometimes uh, and granted the level 9 players are usually the best ones uh, I think they get all the way up to, to play me because they are really good and uh, they just haven't made the donations yet or whatever it is to, take to get to level 12 uh, anyway so they their towers their, their princess towers can't take out the fireballs so it, it scores a lick every time. The Goblin Huts, they score a lick every time. So they're slowly beating down on the Princess Towers and defending. So two key elements in defense, having these two two buildings. Which, you know, I, I wouldn't really suggest having two buildings. Except these also play offense. So that's why I, I like them. Then you have the Log. That's another defensive piece that can also... If you need that last 60 or 70 or however many, much damage it does, it can do direct damage to the to the towers as well. So that's three d pieces of defense that can also damage the towers. Then you have the fireball and the poison. And so now you have two direct damage defenses. So really everything I've got in there so far is actually a defensive piece, but they all can damage the princess towers. Then you have the strikers, which the one the main striker is actually the lumberjack. Even though the lumberjack himself, he's a he's a pretty weak card because I mean weak as in he does a lot of damage, yes, but he's got he's got this big attention span, so he gets attracted to everything. Um, rarely will he bypass a defensive building if they set it in the middle offset to the right. He'll still attack it from the left side. Uh, but he's got the rage element to him, which is actually a big factor. And then you have a, a big defensive um, troop, which is the executioner. He can take out all the air troops, like the, the minion horde. And then you have the, the bandit. And what she's so good at is after you get a tower down, although you, you won't see it in any of, the, any of these examples, um, she really does well. Once the tower's down, you can place her on the other side of the, of the bridge, and she'll go right into her special move. Uh, the dash and that's hard to stop I mean, if they don't have something prepared right away she can she'll dash them and then the, I, I call it a wild card because if they don't have uh, if they don't have either the arrows or if they're not prepared with a fireball or with uh, uh, the poison then the minions are just they're really a devastating card as fragile as they are, and they are fragile, and a lot of people can defend against them well because everyone knows how, how much damage they can do, they actually end up being one of the major cards that I, that I play almost every match. Uh, especially on defense on big troops like P.E.K.K.A, like Gollum. And uh, really what I'm trying to do is bait them. Now if they, if they know I have minions already and they have the arrows, they're going to save the arrows for the minions every time. They just don't damage anything else enough to, that, that's worth it. Uh, every once in a while you can catch them off guard because they think they can make a bigger play by, by arrowing maybe two buildings at one time and take both buildings out while the hog rider's on the way to it. Uh, there are special cases where you want to arrow something other than the minions, but really if, you, if someone has minions, the minion horde and you have arrows, that's what you use it on every time. But what I, what I, what I use them on is I'll either use them primarily on the backside of a defensive move. In other words, um, let's say you'll see it a, a little later on in the video where the, uh, I, I actually got to play a couple people that were use, that were still using um, that were still using Gollum and, and Night Witch, which actually is, is still a pretty strong deck for people that know how to use it. I think the guy that I played, I, it's not in this video, but the, I had a, he must have played Gollum eleven times. I, I don't know how many how he played him so many times, but every time I turned around, he had Gollum down already. 
Uh, but what I would do is wait for him to cross over the bridge, poison the bridge, and then attack on the backside of whatever he was bringing in behind it. And uh, the, the minions were taking out whatever was on the backside, and then advancing to the towers because by that time I was taking out Gollum. So really big troop to, pl to play in the middle section if you can. That way it can play in the back end defense and play as a lead strike. All right, so we'll get more into the, the play by play a little more now. I wanted to go over what all the different cards I use in the deck and, and why I use them. And now we'll just kind of get into what, what we're doing while we're, while we're playing. Uh, I'm, this is almost at the end right now. So we'll kind of wait to the next one, but I believe what happens here is uh, he gets down so low and I have poison, I have fireball, I have log. So when the time's run out and you have three direct damage cards, and they don't have, uh, you know, maybe if he had um, the missile or whatever it is that uh, he could, he could take it on the tower. I don't know, but uh, so that that was over with. I believe this this is uh, this match here. I picked every one of these matches out of the last set that I did because they all they all kind of showcase different parts of this deck that that I think were are are really nice and convenient, and. There's so many good decks that you can use that it's hard to pick one first. It's hard to pick one over over another. It really is. If you're if you're someone like me that builds, I, I don't go and play a meta deck. If this is one, it's just luck because uh, I don't go and I, I don't really copy a meta deck and play it. Um, and there's so many good cards that it's hard to to make decks. It really is. Uh, okay, so anyway. This is this is the this is the Gollum Night Witch deck. He also has he also has Minion Horde, so this is a, a really dangerous deck. He also he also has the Elite Barbarians. So what I try to do is I'm going to redirect everything he has towards my defensive buildings and poison the poison the minions if I can. Also there has to be there has to be acceptable losses and and whenever you're dealing with a deck that's really powerful like a, like a golem uh, night witch deck that has all that has a ton of powerful elements to it uh, you have to you have to be able to manage uh, some losses and choose, pick and choose which losses that you're willing to manage now we are not a, we're not watching what he has because I I didn't know what he has what he had when I was playing him not looking back you know it's, it's so easy to to look back and. And know what you should have done. Uh, now I think what he's doing here is he's switching up sides. I don't know why he was late on the golem to try to try to protect that building. So that was just kind of a waste to come down that side when the other the other alley had so much more damage on it. So at this point, I think he's trying to make that last push. But now he's got golem coming in. He's got all these troops coming in. He's got mains coming in. One poison spell takes out everything. He's got so many small little single housing space troops. And this act, this actually is not the, the same deck as I was thinking of. This is not the Golem Night Witch deck. And another big advantage, if you notice now, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start extending my protective area. So I can actually go over the over the bridge on the right side. And it, so now I put out the the Goblin Hut on the on on the other side of the bridge. But that will pull some of his troops towards it instead of coming over the line. And I still have. And they come up once you're in double elixir time. These when you have two buildings that you that you can pick from, they come up quick. It seems like every third card is one of the buildings. Now I know if you put them down both together all the time, then it's different. But if you spread them out and you don't put them down together, and you and you make sure you put two two cards down in between them, there is a defensive building coming up all the time. Now this is the this is the one I thought was the last one. And this is actually um, another great great example of how this deck is real real diverse and versatile. This is one of my most hated decks to play against. He's got the, he's got power all over it. Uh, he brings in many Pika, Pekka, whatever. But poison actually does real well against it. Uh, poison in one log will take out all of the mid range troops that are four or five hundred um, four or five hundred hit points. And a lot of those four or five hundred hit points troops, those are actually the big troops that do a ton of damage. And he underestimated that time, underestimated the uh, bandit, 
and uh, once she gets into her little charge, her dash, uh, you, you have her with the dash, and you have right in front of her, you have the Lumberjack, who's at, at any time, he's about to pop and her, turn into a rage spell. So if you just happen to catch her in a dash with the, with the rage going off, that's a lot of damage. So if you have limited strikes, and you just manage to land one or two strikes, that's a really good one-two punch to land, because you get two of those in in the whole match, and you'll take out a tower. Now again, use the poison, and he baited me with the poison, and so now he br brings in. I didn't know he had clone. Brings in, uh, brings in minions on a clone, and didn't didn't even bother. I, it looks like he may have had a double clone or a mirror, and he may have cloned the second time. So that could have been the whole match. I think he was counting on that being the match, but all of the minions, all of the main minions, had already died, so they all had one hit point, so they all died off pretty fast. So at this point, okay, this is a dangerous position for me to be in. We both have one tower down, but all that he has to do is sneak up underneath me on the left side. And So I put down the, the Goblin Hut. It's kind of like the Clash Royale version of the castle in, in chess. And so now I have two different defensive pieces up, and they can defend from two different areas. Then I can put in my any kind of range troop in behind those two buildings, which is, which is the way this is going to play out. I'll be able to put the Executioner behind the, the Goblin Hut and watch how much action I get out of the Executioner. Meanwhile, the whole time I'm waiting for them to get further and deeper in, uh, put the Lumberjack in behind them. They have no attention to the Lumberjack whatsoever. They think they have me with a clone spell, with a mirror, and the Lumberjack easily takes out the, the center, center tower. So, good win. It was surprised me too because I put him in and then I had to shift my focus back to the to what was at hand, which was uh, me getting my ass hammered. <laughs> so now this guy right here is um, your typical um, big mouth prick that I hate playing against. So I kind of shut my mouth as he makes comments on every single thing I do. My favorite players really, when I win. <laughs> so same setup, what we want to do is be as patient as possible. But what I wanted to do right away is show them. Look, we're going to play down both. We're going to play down uh, both sides. So you're going to have to defend on both sides. You're going to have to be mindful of both sides. Even if I never played another card down the right side, at least now he knows that that is something that I'm thinking about. So now that's something he's thinking about, and that immediately altered his game plan. And you know, the, one of the biggest parts of this game isn't really even necessarily how you play or how well you play. It's how you can change the way they play. Because you take a comfortable player out of his comfort zone, and you, you just wrecked his whole game. So, another good point, another great part of this deck is the versatility of these two defensive buildings. He, what this guy did not do is he does not fireball, he does not poison, he does not play anything on the center in the center of this uh, setup. So, I, be, I hope this is the right one. So I'm able to set up both buildings side by side next to each other. And so what that does is two things. One, and, and okay, sorry, let, let me go ahead with this. Um, whenever you see this advancement right here, now normally I'll, what I'll do is I'll play the towers in the center or behind, back to the right or back to the left. And I, and I do that to separate them. That way one fireball can't hit the two towers and, and uh, the, a princess tower. So that kind of separation kind of saves it. And then you also preserve whatever's in the back a little bit longer. And there's a, a huge tactical error for him. Did, he did not um, anticipate the dash. And that's one of the power, powerful parts of this deck. Uh, minions come in. Poison takes care of that as long as he gives me some time. That was a desperation move. He, th he slings some arrows on top of it. I don't know if he, he was thinking I was going to defend with uh, minions. Because he's already seen the minions one time. So he's already seen everything that I have. But another something you don't want to do is be predictable. You just don't want to be predictable. Now, what he did is the most predictable thing. He pushed down the biggest card he has. So at this point, he's obviously going to make a big push down the right side. If he had put down Pekka and waited a whole 10 seconds and then put in something coming down the left side and it maybe shifted back to the right or done something like that, then I knew I was in trouble. But really, all that this kid was is a big mouth. <laughs> really. And so now I extended the, my, my side of the field over to the other side of the bridge. So he takes out that uh, he takes that out real quick, but it's too late by this point. He's already on the other side. G give him my little two cents. That's not just one uh, uh, crybaby. That's two. You get two crybabies from easy for being a dick. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everyone that watched the videos. Sub to the channel. Need a thousand subs.
We're real close. Almost there. Appreciate everyone for watching. Till next time, it's been easy.